welcome to your quick Friday reading. I do these flash Friday readings um, for people whenever they get their readings on Fridays. We're just supposed to do like a little quick tap in and tap out, but we need a little bit more than a quick tap in, tap out. That's okay. 100% okay. Sometimes that's what we need. And it takes these little, like, readings to bring that out in us. So, I'm going to go ahead, get nice and comfortable, take a nice deep breath in, deep breath out, and just understand and know that this is your spiritual time for you to be spiritual and to receive the messages that you're supposed to be receiving in divine timing. Yeah. So, it was supposed to be a one card pull, and I pulled three cards for you, and I think I need to pull some more, actually, now that we're in this. I hope you've been having a good day, and I hope this reading finds you well, and just note that if it's just like a little bit heavier than what you're, than what you're used to, then... It's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be so much fun, right? So the first card you pulled was the devil. <laughs> now, I pause whenever I say this because usually whenever I read for you, it's kind of like, oh, this is okay. Like, we're vibing and, and ghost riding. Like, you usually have it a little bit together. And not to say that you don't have it together, I'm just saying with the devil, we need to start paying attention to details. Kind of, it makes me, reminds me of the saying, the devil's in the details, and we've forgotten the details on purpose, because then you have to look at it. You have to look at what makes you a little bit more uncomfortable than we like. Um. So I don't know why this is being brought up, but like, drinking like drinking alcohol there needs to be like limits um and that could just be like within shadow work we need to discover why that's a thing so I would advise you to start looking at your shadow self and what I mean by shadow self is look at the moments in which like you're not taking care of your body you're not taking care of your mental health um, basically where you're not putting yourself first or you're sacrificing what makes you more of you and your personality for the comfort of other people. And so we need to detach from a lot of those feelings of people pleasing. And I think that's just like a general scope of where a lot of people are, but I think people pleasing in your relationships is where we need to focus because we are good enough. You are good enough. You got it, okay? But where the devil comes in, it kind of chains you to these behaviors. And that's not okay for you. You're not going to settle down and be like your best self for that. So the devil's in the details and we need to start paying attention to our own inner details and our own inner guidance. The next card you got is the three of swords. Isn't this so nice? <laughs> this gives me a lot of feelings of anxiety and I feel like we're struggling here just mentally, emotionally, just like, oh, every time I have to think about it, it's scary. The Three of Swords really finds you in that air element and dealing with choices and betrayal and things that just hurt. And I'm looking at my notes and I'm looking at, you know, betrayal and just not speaking to self. Like, we're not being honest about something. And it is hurting more than it is helping. And it's time to like pull that wool off of your eyes and just be like, is this a good situation for me? Is this where I'm finding my best self, my truest self? So whatever truths you've been ignoring, we need to stop. We need to stop. 
also in terms of spirituality and spiritual practice, like we need to have some boundaries. Everything that you think is not there is there. It's all watching you. It's all with you. It's all there. Cohabitating. (laughs) So we need to take a look at that shadow work and also just boundaries. Put up some protection. If you are in the spiritual land and you're doing things that are like woo-woo, we need to have some type of boundaries and protection around yourself and for yourself. And that can be as small as, hey, I want my guides to come forward. I need some protection. I need some guidance. But you also need to be open to listening to them and understand that not every message is scary and overwhelming. And at the end of the day, you're you're going to be fine. Your spiritual team is the per- are the people beings, I guess is the better word to say, are the ones that have your back. But whenever you're so thick into this shadow and these addictive behaviors and these bad habits and like holding on to the people that also resemble these addictive behaviors and bad habits, it's harder and harder for them to reach you because you're muffled. And their messages become unclear and then you end up just kind of like walking around like, why do I feel like shit? It's kind of like whenever you go a whole day and just drink nothing but like coffee and energy drinks and you're like, why do I feel so bad? It's because you're having that crash because you haven't drank water all day. So if I were you, they're telling me to make, they're showing me a pros and cons list. Make a pros and cons list of your situation. And where do we need to kind of meet in the middle? Where can you compromise on certain things? And if you can't compromise, then it's time to, like, fucking go. Because nothing is worth your emotional stability or your sanity. So, we need to just... We have lots of potential of moving on and having clarity and becoming more clear in our messages. And are being receptive to the divine is the word that they're using. You have the potential to do a lot of things. I think right now what we're trying to do is just getting comfortable in our own skin and in our own vibe. And like I said, I don't know what really happened. Because whenever I read from you, for you and I have read for you before, things have been good and have felt good and have been blissful and like you're just riding the wave so that's why I say like it's time to pay attention to our inner self and our our mental health and our mental state and how we've been doing and to not hold on to people or things or places that make us feel icky page of wands so our wands are our power card and that is can be like our our element of like inner power and where we get our hey what the fuck are you doing you're like not paying attention to me or I need you to not speak over me whenever I'm trying to communicate to you or whenever you dismiss me you feel you make me feel a type of way that is where this comes from, this page in the suit of tarot and in the wands. So we need to see, seek better boundaries and just be open to more communication. Communication with yourself and communication with your spirit guides, not necessarily like other people. Like other people need to fuck off. They do. They need to fuck off. We need to be communicating back to ourselves and how that works. Isn't that nice and uncomfortable? Because what happens is whenever we listen more to our own inner voice, on we are doing spiritual things. Our spirituality kind of tends to deepen and unfold even more. And that is nice and scary at the same time. So if you're experiencing this and you're having moments of like, oh my god, um, don't worry, it's going to be okay. You can message me. We can talk about it. And if I can't help you, I can find somebody who can help you. And that is the goal, obviously, all the time. So let's 
get into your oracle cards in this reading. I was told to do some oracle cards, so we are, and quite a few of them came out. So the first one is transformation. Things are changing on a cellular level, deep healing. So this goes back to that shadow work card that I pulled for you. It's time to like really get serious. We need to get serious, okay? We need to get serious and develop more of a spiritual routine, spiritual practice. This can be you just pulling cards for yourself, doing meditation. This can be you joining a spiritual community, group. Maybe you do fucking yoga. I don't know, girl. Whatever is going to be helpful um, and help you get back to you, like finding that alignment. So let's get to the next card which is a leap you go first the universe will catch you so I can't teach you how to trust the messages that you're receiving I can't teach you how to not question your intuition and make it feel like less ego is coming in you just have to stop fucking doing it like you just have to stop it's kind of like whenever you decide that you're gonna break up with a boyfriend and you just stop looking him up on social media just stop. After the breakup, just stop it. Um, that's what this is. You're taking this leap, this leap of faith, like, within yourself, and we're just going to cold turkey stop. We just need to stop. Stop. That's what this, that's what that card really represents. But you have to be ready to do that because that is easier said than done. Breaking that type of pattern. Way easier said than done. So the next card you have is Keepers of the Earth. You are not alone. Ancestors stand beside you. So this is more of a spiritual card. And this is a lot of information about your guides and things asking you to be like, come on, time to be more serious. And I think it's more just deciding on where you want to go, what you want to do. Your path is your own. And however you go about growing your spiritualness, powers, however you want to say it, your people are there for you. Your spirit guides are there for you. Your dead grandma is there for you. Everybody is there for you. They're kind of just like in line waiting for you to be like, okay, I'm here. And they will be there for you. So we have some family healing we need to address some family issues some karmic cycles and it's going to be okay because the next card you have is break the chain ancestral patterns healing rewriting the future Whew. this can be a lot to do with family addictions um in the way in which families communicate with each other or lack of communication that needs to change and it it's wanting to change within you but you got to be the it's the hard part about it because you have to be the first person to make that uncomfortable step is it always easy no is it humbling yes especially whenever there's people like you don't want to talk to you don't want to associate with but in order to break those patterns and those habits within yourself and to create better habits with the people that are coming in and out of your life is to be the first person to do it. And sometimes that sucks. It's not easy. I asked my grandmother once, I was like, why do we only get together with our family during like reunions and we never just go visit them? And that was like a slap in the face to her. And after that, she made more of a point to visit up until the very end of her life. And she couldn't visit anymore because I had called her out on, you know, how often do we really spend time with our family? If family is so important, we're not making them important. We're not making that a priority. We have time for what we make a priority for. And... Our most important priority, yes, is ourselves, but if we're being asked by our ancestors and our spirit guides to kind of pay attention to what is happening around us, it starts within our own family unions. So the next one is Akasha. Your guidance is being divinely guided. So this is definitely a sign that spirit speaks to you. 
And whenever I pull this card, this is also a sign that you need to get your Akashic Records read. I always take it as that. It's time to dive into our past lives and get your Akashic Records read. Go to a reader, a reader that you trust. It doesn't have to be me. It can be anybody else that does Akashic Records readings. Readers need your permission to access your Akashic Records. And it's basically like a spiritual Google and they are going in. And looking at past life gifts, um, current life gifts, soul contracts, energetic cords, spiritual attachments, like that is the big kahuna <laughs> of energy work and energy readings. And you can get some readers that mix all of that in together. Sometimes if that comes up in a reading, I will throw it in there. But if it doesn't, then I don't because that can be a lot of information and can be extremely overwhelming. So you do that in the time and place and manner in which is good for you. But this was your reading. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. I know you had to wait a little bit for it, but I think it was worth it because you got a whole hell of a lot more than what you originally were supposed to get. And I think it's time for those messages to come forward. But if you have any questions or comments or concerns, you can always reach out to me.